Well, he says, show how a epoxide would react with a nucleophile or an acid. Okay. First of all, what is an epoxide? A cyclic membrane with a oxygen instead of a carbon. <laughs> Three-membered ring with an oxygen instead of a carbon. That's right. Sometimes, I think last term, we call those oxacyclopropanes. Um, they're also called oxy rings or epoxides. Okay, well, show the mechanism. How would this nucleophile react with this epoxide? Well, we know that the um, partially negative, this would be partially positive, this would be partially positive. So it would attack either here or here. Necessary, we can number the carbons to make sure we're not losing or dropping any. It's good that you realize that this would now be negative, and the nucleophilic atom would not be negative anymore. Yeah. Okay, well that's how a nucleophile attacks. Now, why is it reasonable for this carbon to act like an electrophile? Because it's partially positive, so we know it's an electrophile. Good, we talked about that last term. Now here, this oxygen is acting like a leaving group. It's kind of weird because it's still attached through behind, but it is leaving this alpha carbon over here. Mm -hmm. Now, are neutral oxygens usually good leaving groups? No, we don't like forming O minus, so there must be some special driving force that allows this oxygen to form the O minus. Oh, it's in such, it's so constrained because it's right. like a triangle. So That's right. Nature doesn't like this three-membered ring. The driving force that allows us to form the O minus, which we normally couldn't do, is um, to relieve the ring strain. We talked about that last term. We are, earlier we mentioned that there are some ex exceptions where you can have a neutral oxygen as a leaving group, and this is the one we saw last term. Now, by the way, what might happen next here? Um, can you think of any, um, because nature doesn't like a charge. So, so there's basically two things like nature could do to get rid of that charge. It could protonate itself. Yeah, the oxygen could just pick up a proton from somewhere. Or another nucleophile can attack and make it leave. No, because, uh, no, because. Uh, yeah. Can that's, it attack something else? Like the who could attack someone else? The O minus will attack something Perfect. else because it's a nucleophile now. So Perfect. it could attack like an electrophile. Or that's right. Okay. Now, one of your guesses is that another nucleophile would attack. That doesn't make sense because a negative wouldn't attack a negative, and this is not a leaving group. Yeah. Um, all right, but you rejected that. Basically, the oxygen could act now like a nucleophile and attack somebody else, and that would get rid of its charge. That's pretty common. So um, basically what we came up with is now the oxygen, how can the oxygen get rid of its negative charge? It can act like either a base or a nucleophile. If it acts like a base, it's just going to take a proton. And if it acts like a nucleophile, it's going to donate its electrons to and join some other substrate. Either of those would get rid of this negative charge. So this is a, um, going to be pretty common this term. One of the most frustrating things with the reactions this term is oftentimes it's hard to know when to stop. It's hard to know when you, get your, when you have your final product. For example, this is not necessarily the final product because there might be a good proton to steal or there might be a good electrophile for this to attack. So one of the skills we have to get is we always have to, when we're deciding whether something's a final product, we have to ask, are there any charges left? And if there is, we have to ask, is there a reasonable way to get rid of that charge? Well, the reasonable ways to get rid of negative charges are by acting like a base to pick up a proton or acting like a nucleophile. Now, it's possible that there are no good protons to steal, and it's possible that there's no good electrophiles around, and then this really would be the final product. It's a judgment call. You have to decide, but we can't assume that. This, so this may or may not be the final product, depending on what else is in the mix. Um, so that's something that oftentimes comes up here with epoxides. All right, so now we've reviewed how, what happens when a nucleophile reacts with an epoxide. Okay. That's very important. How the alcohol would react with the base or acid. Right, although I think there was something else he asked you about the epoxide, right? How it would act with an acid. Oh, yeah, sorry. So let's go over that. How would this epoxide react with this acid? So it would probably steal an eight. The O would eat steal an eight from here. Good. So we can show the mechanism for that.
Good, I'm glad you were thinking about that. By the way, um, as a minor technicality, this hydrogen, there's not two hydrogens on the same oxygen. So you would um, want, you would want to, um, it's a little bit better to actually show that the hydrogen is on a separate oxygen. Yeah. That's just a minor technicality. Uh, but you got the right product here. Now it's really good that you said to yourself, this might not be the final product because it has a charge. Mm -hmm. And then you have to ask, is there any reasonable way it could get rid of the charge? Well, what would be a reasonable, be reasonable thing that might happen now that would help us to get rid of this charge? Um, supply of H minus opening, some, something attacking the electrophilic carbons on either side, so it would attack, so it would open. All right, that's a good analysis, yeah. Um, so it's good that you notice that now these carbons are electrophiles, mm -hmm. not the oxygen. Even though the oxygen has the positive charge, it's the carbons it's that they're extra, electrophiles. Extra, extra, partially right. positive. Now. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Well, who, who, what type of thing would attack these electrophiles then? A nucleophile. That's the one word that you didn't mention. So a good way to get rid of this charge would now be have a nucleophile attack one of these electrophilic carbons. This positive charge here doesn't make the oxygen into an electrophile. It makes the carbons into electrophiles, but it does make the oxygen into a better leaving group. So now that also helps this reaction to happen. Now, even without the ring strain, it would be easy for this oxygen to leave. Okay, I won't take it further than that, um, but um, that would be the, the next step here. By the way, notice that now I'm able to use a neutral nitrogen, a neutral nucleophile, whereas before we probably needed a negative nucleophile. Why is it that we're probably able to use a neutral nucleophile here? Because it, there's already a good leaving group on it. So yeah, and because it's more electrophilic because of the positive charge. So the positive charge is playing two good roles here. It's both making this into a better leaving group, and it's making these more electrophilic. So in general, that's what acids do. Because acids give things positive charges okay. by giving the protons, the purpose of treating something with an acid is to give it a better leaving group and make it more electrophilic. So if you have a reaction that's not working, one way to make it work is to use an acid to give the molecule uh, a proton, which makes it more positive, which makes it, gives it both a better leaving group and more electrophilic atoms. All right, here we needed a pretty good nucleophile because we had a terrible leaving group and not particularly electrophilic carbons. The acid here makes, the, makes it, it allows us to get by with a, a weaker nucleophile. All right, so those are very important points that your instructor was bringing up of how an epoxide might react with a nucleophile or with an acid. And even if you did react with an acid, that would probably just be preliminary to still putting in the nucleophile. But now we can use a weaker nucleophile. Okay, yeah, this is a good exercise. So we can look at some of the other examples that I mentioned. Um, how the alcohol would react with the base or an acid. Yeah, that's important. So let me come up with an example of that. That'll be important. Hopefully we'll have time for that. But what we're going over now is kind of the, the key to the whole course, just getting comfortable with, these, with this basic logic. The key to the course is we don't want to have to just learn a thousand isolated reactions. We want to see the unifying principles. So this is a good, uh, a good exercise for seeing the unifying principles. So let's decide how would this molecule will react with this acid. So because it's an acid, it will probably attack the So right. it won't attach, but if you have another nucleophile, it could attack the carbon. Okay, yeah, uh, that, that's really, uh, those are all the, the key points. So um, what was the purpose of, of adding the proton to the oxygen? Making it a good leaving group. Yeah, and that's really it. Yeah. Making it into a good leaving group. Because is neutral oxygen a good leaving group? No. no. But now it's a good leaving group with a positive charge, so I don't, we won't take this further. But now this could leave. Uh, well, yeah, I might as well take it further. You, you, already, you already analyzed the rest. When it leaves, that'll leave us with a carbocation. 